Welcome to Las Vegas for the Event 2 final table of the PGT PLO series. Coming at you live from the Boca Ghost studio right here in Las Vegas. Today on tap, a $7,500 PLO bounty tournament. $2,500 each time when you knock a player out. But of course, that not that much of a factor here at the final table as the first place prize is $131,325. My name is Remco Rinkema, Donnie Peters alongside me to call the action. Please join us on YouTube, Twitch, or wherever else you are watching this from. We have Finnish legend and WSB bracelet winner Elis Parsonen as our chip leader. He won this very event last year, so the question is, will he go back to back? We have an absolutely stacked final table. We'll dive into the bios of all these players. But first, let's look at these payouts. The final six guaranteed $25,750, all the way up to $131,325. So let's dive straight into the action. As you know, no bells and whistles when Donnie and I are on the call. Just straight up poker action. Let's have some fun with this. Josh Ari on the left-hand side of your screen, six-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner, former WSOP Player of the Year. Ronald Kaiser from the Netherlands, also a bracelet winner. Elis Parsonen, also a bracelet winner. Isaac Kempton, a legend in his own right, with just shy of $5 million in career tournament earnings. Lotaro Guerra, the first ever winner of the PGDPLO series last year. And then there's Brad Bradley Rubin in the sixth seat. He also a multiple time bracelet winner. So Donnie, where's the soft spot? There really isn't one. I, I guess the dealer? Does the <laughs> <laughs> Maybe here I in the booth? I, I mean, think we're I the soft spots, yeah, Donnie. We're yeah. the soft spots. Seriously, there are no, there's, it's hard to find any soft spots in general it, in the series, right? You get pretty much just PLO specialists, purists of the game coming out for the series. And these six right here are absolutely no joke. Terrific final table lineup. Let us know in the chat who you are rooting for. I can almost make the case for almost almost every one of these players. A lot of cool backstory going on. Isaac Kempton, of course, a studio favorite. Has the witty one-liners along with the aggressive play. Lotaro Guerra. Winner of the first PGDPLO series, which we, which we did not stream, so no, um, not much of a record of his Jax. play, as Kempton shows down Jax. Look at that! <laughs> Look at that! A little he fist loves pump from it. He loves it. Who loves it more? Yeah, Guerra, that first PGDPLO series, believe it was three caches and three wins. So every wow. time he made the money, he won the tournament, ran away with the series. He didn't do too much the second edition of the PGT PLO series. Pretty much bricked out there. But he is back here and looks like he's getting an early start. Maybe to another title run. You never know. Event number two, final table. Elis <coughs> Parsonen already claiming a title for best dressed at this final table. I'm not sure what's in the water in Finland, but I do love the um, exuberance. Well, PLO is in the water, that's <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well, I think gambling <laughs> is in the water, and that's why they all gravitate towards PLO as Josh Arie finds aces here in the under the gun position. Shout out to Robert in the chat. He loves our commentary. Robert, we love that you're hanging out with us. Very much appreciated as always. Shout out to everyone else who's with us. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us know how your day is going as Parsonen looks down at Jack Jack 87. Comes along with the call, by the way. Also has the glasses to match the sweater. Donnie, as always, it is your task to find out the price of the sweater. Can Which we, one? Of Elis. Elis, okay. Uh, and can we please get some guesses in the chat? Because I think we're looking at about $1,200 right here. That's my first guess. Um, all right, flop comes out, heads up between Arya and Parson, and then there it is, top set for the Finnish pro. Aces in PLO, far more vulnerable than in No Limit Hold'em. If you're new to the game of Pot Limit Omaha, caution is always advised. Aria, however, can't simply give Parson credit for just a set of jacks. There's plenty of combinations of hands that he still has beat at this point. Unfortunately for the man from Georgia, he has stepped into it this time around. Donnie, always tough with aces. You know, no matter what flop, 
if it doesn't uh, like include an ace, it's always going to be difficult. It is for sure going to be difficult. I mean, these players, of course, I think they know how to navigate these spots. But Arya here, I mean, I, I want to say just because he's kind of on the shorter side here, he's got 770k oh, yeah. behind. Yeah, he's, the money's just going to go in and Parson <coughs> snaps him off. Team Lucky, Josh Arya is the captain of that team. He's going to need to get lucky here. Wow. This Only time for real. Number two at this final table. Bounty on the line. Those are the red ships. By the way, you can see the red ships in front of each player, indicating how many players they've sent to the rail. Both Arya and Parson have sent many players to the rail, but in this very situation, Arya only 5% to survive here. River card to three Ooh, of clubs. Again. That's not going to do it. Josh Arya, our first casualty at this final table, busting out in sixth place. Parsonen, the rich get richer, breaks this one in. No, no I have to say. Yeah. Arya collects $25,750 for this cash. The Terminator. The Executioner. <laughs> <laughs> I think he likes that one. I'm all for it, man. I want those pay jumps. As I mentioned, Parson also collects that bounty worth $2,500. Donnie, he's got a stack of about, what, 10 or 12? Yeah, it looks like, it looks like 10, at least 10, maybe 11. So if it's 10, that's 25K. Field now reduced to the final five. Stack still fairly deep here. Parson, the chief leader with over 100 big blinds. The short stack, Bradley Rubin on 22 bigs. There are three bounty tournaments on the schedule for this PGT PLO series. There is, of course, this one, which is a straight bounty tournament. $7,500 buy-in, $2,500 for each bounty, as Remco has already mentioned. 5K goes to the prize pool. And then there are two progressive bounties coming up, one at the 5K price point and then one at the $15,000 price point. So stay tuned for those. Those always get fun as those bounties get bigger and bigger as you go on in the tournament. Jack 5-3 here. Parson had raised under the gun. Kaiser made the call out of the big blind. Check, check, seven on the turn. With that 6-4 in his hand, Parson has a straight and it's an unbeatable one as long as he doesn't fold. Check, check again. Three of hearts on the river does pair the board. Quarter pot here from Parson in 80k. Into the muck they go for Kaiser. And chip leader continues to chip up. $1,350 fleece hoodie, Remco. Wow. Made by made by Burberry. Did I nail it or what? You did nail it. He had a similar one last PGT PLO series, but it was blue and white, like the Finnish flag. Of course. This one, of course, red and blue, but seems like he just probably got every color from the Burberry shop. I mean... <laughs> He probably went next door because we are at the Pokego studio, which is a short walk away from some very, I guess, I would call it expensive shops. All big brands are available. It, it's sort of the perfect location. You know, you, you, you hit a big score, Donnie, you just treat yourself a little bit. Of course. I mean, I think him and his crew make, make a trip out of these, these PLO series. They come over, they play some golf, 
feel like every day on Instagram I see them teeing off at the the wind golf course in the morning. Then they come on over here, get into the PLO action. So cool. Ruben here with a real hand. King Jack nine three double suited on the button. Just gonna limp in. Okay. Action goes to the flop three ways. Parson with a, a really nice Omaha eight or better hand with the ace, deuce, three, five, and the suited ace. That, of course, works pretty decently on a four deuce six flop as Parson flops a straight, comes out betting right away. Some options here for Kaiser. Heart on the turn would be preferred for him. Or, of course, a five to make a higher straight. Ace on the turn gives both players a pair of aces, but Parson, of course, already the holder of a straight. Kaiser again with the check. Parson continues to bet out, betting 310. Kaiser now with two pair, aces and fours, also has a gut shot straight draw. Five would give him a higher straight. Every time I call the outs of a PLO hand, Donnie, I always feel like I'm forgetting at least one combo. Eh, probably. <laughs> There's too many <laughs> cards going on, you know. <laughs> Get lost in it all. There it is. Kaiser is going to make the call, creating a really big pot here going to the river. Just shy of a million chips in the middle. River card is the eight of clubs. Parson with the check mark. His hand holds up. Kaiser has now paired three of his cards. Does not hold the ace of clubs, which of course is on board. Any high club might entice him to run some sort of bluff, but in this case, he really doesn't have a whole lot going ace on. Parsonen decides to check behind and he gets the showdown the winner here. It's been all Parsonen so far. Now approaching six million is the fin. Fairly quiet here at this final table. I'm just waiting for Isaac Kempton to throw us a one-liner that will crack up the entire table. I know, I know, he always you know has it's one. Coming. Yeah, you know it. By the way, shout out to Big Shack Attack for the five-dollar donation. It's their tenth time, Donnie, donating to the stream. So a special shout out to. That's my guy from Kenmore. Exactly. He says, "Hey, if you're in the broadcast again, shout out Donnie Peters again from our neighborhood of Kenmore." That's right, baby. Couple of kings there for Parson in gets puts a raise in and takes it down. Donnie, if you're any player at this table not named Elis Parsonen, how does your game plan change now that the chip dynamics are the way they are? Yeah, I mean we heard Isaac Kempton say earlier that he was a fan of the pay jumps, so uh, you know, I mean I don't know if he's telling, you know, just kind of joking about it. The pay jumps aren't massive, but they are meaningful, yes. Um, <laughs> you know, there is some thought to the whole ICM dynamic. Just kind of let Parson and do his thing there, and we're all going to try and ladder up some spots, right? I mean, 
It's interesting with both Kaiser and Ruben, although Ruben is, you know, a tad shorter. Just being on the short side together, so we're gonna probably try and outlast one another, not go too crazy. And then if you're Kempton and Guerra, you know, you're in the middle there. You feel comfortable, but you also don't want to have any sort of crazy misstep that ultimately costs you a lot of money in the end. Kempton here does look like he has a decision facing a raise from Parson on the button. Everyone gives it up and Parson takes it down. Already getting shades of, of last year, the second edition of the PGT PLO series when in this very event, Parson came in with the chip lead, won the event, or finished it out in two hours, pretty much like this. Raising every hand, winning every pot, busting all the players. It, it really was the Parson and show. And so, so far, I mean, he's won five hands. He took out Josh Arie. The guy's cruising, absolutely cruising. He's got 48% of the chips in play. One twenty five. One hundred twenty five. Another raise from the chip leader and everyone just gets out of the way. I mean that's just gonna be what it is today, guys. I mean I, I don't know what to tell you out there. Yesterday we had a very exciting final table in terms of the dynamic play that we were pretty blessed with. The players were getting the chips in quite often. Players were doubling up left and right. Eliminations were happening. There was a big, big, big fold from Alan Lee at one point. Which ultimately, he did go on to win the tournament even despite making that fold. And here, you know, I feel like, I feel like not only the, the other four players battling with Parsonen, but the viewers, we're all just in ICM hell. <laughs> <laughs> we're, that's just where we all are exactly. right? <laughs> do your thing Parson and we'll just watch the show yeah, I wonder if some of these players can uh, come into the chat you know, while they're playing at the table I guess no phones allowed but still it would be funny mm. to get some of their opinions finally takes a hand off here Yeah, <laughs> gives Kempton a chance to to attack here making it 125 17 C Pot says, these boys are scared to play. I mean, I'd be scared too if I was dealing with such a dominant chip leader because, you know, pay jumps are still pay jumps. No need to take any major risks. Guerra here makes the call on the button. With King, King, 4, 3. Kaiser's cards, still missing one of them. Ten okay. deuce, ace, two hearts on the flop here. Kempton flopping an ace. Kaiser at least with a pair of tens. Let's just say for the sake of fun, Donnie, the other card Kaiser has is the jack of hearts. That would make things more interesting. No, of course it would. Kempton going to come with it here. You guys can see the bounty chips, those red chips that say bounty in big letters. Ha Kempton's got quite a bit of them. Guerrero's got, I think he's got five there. Kempton looks like he's got 12 or 13 maybe. So He might be the bounty leader in the, at the table. Yeah. Ronald Kaiser looks like he's got five as well. So Kempton was doing some work leading up to this final table. Smile there from the kid as he rakes that one in. Feeling good, not the biggest pop, but it does help to separate yourself from the other players and kind of put yourself, I mean, you're not really approaching Parson just yet, but 
having that gap between the other players can give you that cushion that is, you know, very much welcome to have in this sort of situation. Four nationalities represented at this final table. Kaiser from the Netherlands, Parson from Finland, Kempton and Ruben from the U.S., and Guerra from Spain. Potlim and Omaha, definitely an international game. It wasn't too long ago, Donnie, that almost all PLO players were from Europe. I feel like in the U.S. Europe, the or it was like Europe or Texas. Oh, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah, but PLO is a, uh, it's really, it's in a growth spurt, I would say. Right. That's how I described it today in the Poker Go Discord channel. Sure. Obviously not not really experiencing a a boom like growth that, that you saw from No Limit Texas Hold'em, but uh certainly growing. Sure. Sure. We got three players involved here. We are missing a couple of cards, forgive us for that. So we'll be flying blind a little bit here on the seven seven six flop. Checks around, Jack of Spades on the turn. Carson and Guerra both connecting with that jack, at least. 75,000. Ruben's got at least a couple queens. He's got two spades in his hand as well. Action checked over to Guerra, and he bet 75. Ruben makes the call. Parson out of the way. Down to heads up play here to the river. Five of hearts. Guerra coming in here with a straight now up to the nine. And there's still a chance he also has a full house, but he's at least working with the straight. That is 250 into a pot of 375. Are you? Ruben going into the tank here. Yeah, Paul and Omaha definitely not a game that goes about pairs. This bet of 250 here on the end representing just about a third of what Ruben has remaining, 790k left for him. He does give it up. Just rescan the cards again oh. for a second. You too? Yeah. We gonna know what he had? They <laughs> had? I don't know if they both <laughs> they both had a one card issue. I feel like maybe maybe the, one of the cards is defected or the reader is having an issue, but we did not get a chance to look at those cards, but hey, that's yeah, what you, happens sometimes. Use your imagination out there. <laughs> yeah, we got to keep you guys on your toes. <laughs> nice pot there for Guerra as he takes that one, chips up a little bit. Still five-handed. PGT PLO event number two. If you want to work on your pot limit Omaha game, Go to plomastermind.com slash pokergo and learn to win for free. No jokes. I signed up yesterday during the stream. I've been playing around with it, and I can already tell that my confidence in my preflop approach is going up. Check them out right now, plomastermind.com slash pokergo. Make an account, and you'll be playing their virtual game in a matter of seconds. Donnie watched me yesterday as I signed up. It was extremely simple. Go give those guys a chance, and it is free to sign up right now. 319 chips. <laughs> I got my eye on him. I'm going for that bounty after that little <laughs> comment. <laughs> How many bounties do you have? Man, I got 12. 
Good read, Donnie. You called it. Even though Donnie, this is a bounty tournament, busy. those don't really come into play much anymore. Yeah, I mean, factored in slightly at this point. You know, the pay jumps are up to the point where, yeah, it's good to get an extra $2,500, but, more chips. Wow. you know, the, the pay jumps oh are quite God. big. <laughs> I dodged a bullet there. You did. All my cards were live, though. Parson with an absolute monster hand. Uh, Donnie, for those beginners that are watching, g give us a, a little insight into, you know, what, what what's a good PLO starting hand? <coughs> what, what I mean, is the, the bigger the better. Oh, Suited good. the better. What is the Monkey Tilt brand? Uh, it's a oh, uh, betting app. Uh, okay. Like a sport book or no? Yeah. yeah. Ryan Garcia. Are you going to gamble? Parson, you gonna get in there? Fire away? Okay. Parson is like, all right, share. sign me up. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he keeps asking about it. It's like what's drawing our attention. To? Wow, <laughs> what's up with the monkey tilt? Looks amazing. <laughs> I have to say, good logo, good name. Monkey tilt definitely. Drawing some eyeballs here at the PGTPLO series. They're branding all over the studio. <laughs> One of our partners. Maybe against you. Pot his ass. Oh, shit. Oh, look oh, at Captain go. go man. 400 and 25? That's more than I thought it would be. <laughs> Come on, man. You're, what, are you, what are we doing here? You're raising the button with nothing? Yes. <laughs> Pair of fours. Oh, you got to love it. You gotta love it. Isaac Hampton coming into his own. Comfortable here, second in chips behind Parson. Also, Donnie has position on him, which could be a vital little detail here at this final table. Yeah, it could be very valuable as this one plays out. Kempton now up to three million in chips. No, but yeah, the types of starting hands you're looking for, I mean, you know, big cards, Broadway cards, obviously big pairs. Aces are obviously valuable, but, you know, can also be vulnerable to a sense. Um, connected cards that perform in, in rundowns, you know, like Queen-Jack-10-9, for example. Definitely want to try and be suited when you can as well. So basically I would say, you know, if you're a Hold'em player, th think in the sense of Hold'em, but expand that thought, that theory to, to four cards, right? You don't want to get in there with a lot of like unconnected hands. Now I will say that we are seeing Parson and get in there with a lot of like kind of random, unsuited, unconnected hands. But he's the chip leader. I mean, That's, this is what you do when you're the chip leader. Even even in Hold'em, you pretty much raise any two. Sometimes you don't look. Maybe you fake look stuff like that. So take that with a grain of salt for how he is playing. But if you're ever in a spot like this where you have a chip lead like this, yes, you should be expanding your range. You should be putting the pressure on your opponents as much as you can. Parson is building an enormous wall of chips here. I like, his, I like his glasses. I bet that his glasses cost less than $30. <laughs> like the 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 fleece hoodie costs thirteen hundred and fifty dollars, but right. those glasses look like you know he probably got them. I don't know. Like at the at the convenience Thank store you. or something. Like he was checking out. Like one of those. Um, and he's like, oh, I want these. One of those Barcelona <laughs> beach vendors. Yeah, something like that. You know, just. I remember back in the day when the Finns were dominating things in Barcelona. They all wore the 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 beach hats. I don't know what you call those things. Like the fedoras? Yeah. That was when Yanni got second or third. Yanni, Jens, uh, Zygmunt, they were all wearing the, the yeah, fedoras. I think they were pretty drunk, too. Yeah, they were, they were, <laughs> they were pretty drunk. I think I if I were to sort of define the difference between when I started in the poker industry and now, the biggest difference is how little drinking goes on nowadays at the poker table. Yeah, it's, it's very true. I mean... People don't really get involved in, in that sort of stuff these days. I mean, here and there, you know, you get the you get the beer level on the WSB main event stuff like that. I actually think uh, Parson was was kind of toasty during one of his runs at the at a big PLO event at the World Series. But hey, 
have some fun. Exactly. These guys, oh, all of go. them, have been playing high stakes for a very long time. For them, for them, this is much more normal than it is for us. And here we have Ruben with kings, and Kaiser finds aces in the small blind. Yeah, I think Ruben's probably just too sure he's going to have to get his money in here, and he does just that. Here we go. Why is it always <laughs> that kings run into aces? It is absurd. We saw it yesterday as well, and now it is Bradley Rubin at risk with the king, king, 10, 7. He's d he do has diamonds going for him, but Kaiser covers a lot of what could be to come you with feel both unlucky? hards and spades. I don't know. <laughs> Get to the spot. I have, if I have a chance. 67% chance for Kaiser to send Rubin to the rail. These stacks very similar. If Ruben somehow manages to win this, Kaiser will be the shortest stack at the table. And an okay. ace in the window right away with two right. diamonds Perfect. behind it. So this keeps things almost as if we were still pre-flop. Kaiser adding 1% to his chances to win. Ruben adding 10 outs to find a double up here. Turn card is eight of better. clubs. Yeah. Adding even more outs. You probably want to see Just one card right? to come. Probably. Even one that pairs a board, that's fine. Any diamond. Ruben now. 30% to survive. River card. Is the Again, jack guys, of yeah. hearts. Again. Full house for Ronald Kaiser. And Bradley Ruben <clears throat> is our next casualty. He gets eliminated in fifth place. Ruben collects $33,475. And of uh, course... Don't forget your bounties. Yeah. I was going to say. <laughs> and of course, he gets to cash jumps. in those bounties. That's, but money. that's money in the bank right oh, yeah. there. Shouldn't forget to take those with him. And there it is. Kaiser receiving the red chip, indicating the elimination. He now up to six bounties, which is not a whole lot considering we are down to the final five. But of course, staying alive in the tournament, a little more Yesterday important. Yesterday was against him, where he flopped Sending squats. players to the rail. No, I ripped the royal. You made the royal. That was you. No, I huh? think it's <laughs> oh. Oh man, you're the nemesis. Did you hear that? That's yeah, I brutal. think uh, yeah, Kaiser was down to like 20 or 30k at some point yesterday. Got his money in, makes a royal, spins it up from there, and now he's here at this final table, chipping a chair, as they say. How much do you have now, Ronnie? Oh, uh, I assume like eight. 1.8-ish. That's oh, okay. Timer's Estimate is good. Seven. Did you even look at your cards? No. Man. I keep holding. How sick would I be if I three bet right now? Parson still gets to pick up the small pots here. Does raise with yeah, a good it's one 18. in the small blind. 1.8. Four yeah. handed with four very like experienced PLO players. Parson has 50% of the chips in One play eight. right eight now. Crush. Wow, neck and neck. Who's going to go out in fourth? Trick question. It's me. <laughs> Donnie, big, big shack attack asking you if you want to go for some wings. Is that a thing in Kenmore? Is there a good wing spot? Yeah. Buffalo wings, man, come on. <laughs> I think Buffalo Wild Wings is well, on I the list of the one of my most turning. hated restaurants. Well, I'm not talking about Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm talking about Buffalo Wings in general. In, oh, just that's a, that's a big thing? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. I had one of my worst restaurants experiences ever in my life. What just would you give to just ago. live his life for one day? For one day? <laughs> man. That's tough. I don't think I would like the golfing, though. The way he tells it, he's just golfing all the time. Not today. It's like, oh, yeah, That's you apparently important. You swung a thing, and you hit a ball, and, oh, I hope it goes near the hole that's, like, a mile away. 
You know, it doesn't sound like a thrilling life to me, but hey, what do I know? <laughs> wow. You're so right. <laughs> Fucking Stevie Sport. <laughs> Isaac Kempton, Bit shitting all over yeah. golf. Yeah, hey, that's the secret. <laughs> Man, I could get into that. 150,000. <clears throat> Parson raising it up with Queen Jack 10 8. Guerra finding kings here. Cool. Makes the call on the small blind. Kaiser. How does it feel it. to be the only American that representing? You were telling me just the other day you're American. That's what they always say. They're like, you know, I've been here a while. I think I'm an American. He does, he does live in LA, does Ronald Never Kaiser. So. American. Wow. But until he loses the accent, he's yeah. I think I, I got you kind of lost the accent. I mean, I've, I've got a leg up on him. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, how long has he really been here, or does he leave his house? Because so I'll will say this, Donnie. The accent has nothing to do with how long yeah. you've been here. It really has to do with your ear. How good is your ear for languages? And I guess it's just a oh, special. Oh, so you're talent. saying he doesn't have an ear for languages? I mean, not many people do. <laughs> I I know people who've been here for 20, 30 years, and their accent is still really strong. Now, you know, if, if I can call myself good at languages, I can also admit right away I'm terrible at math, you know? It's one or the other. It, yeah. We've arrived on the turn. Kay. Interesting turn card here. Really gives Parson and all the outs for a straight. Guerra's Kings here still in the lead. Three eighty. Guerra has taken a conservative approach to this hand, not going too crazy. Does have the best of it here, but Parson is still, still very much in this one, at, at least equity-wise. Absolutely. 35% with one card to come, still, still plenty here. And, of course, he has the chip lead. He is in position. He is the aggressor, so... Guerra does make the call here. Pot now up to 1.5 million. Let's see this river card. Five of hearts hits on the river. The blank of all blanks for Guerra. Donnie, if you're Guerra, you know, 6 7 gets there. But do you really feel sure. scared with your kings here? Some, somehow this board feels rather secure yeah I mean Parson can have like anything I mean <laughs> he's already been opening up an extremely wide range so why can't he have some sort of four why can't he have you know the six seven that you mentioned maybe some other combinations of hands that include full houses you know eights in his hand nines etc like could also run hot and have two aces. Like it's, mm -hmm. just, yeah. I mean, he's just gonna put the pressure on here. And now, wow. <clears throat> All right, Guerra. We know you're well versed in PLO. You got to figure this one out. This is not an easy task and not an easy position that he's been put in here. Guerra gets put under pressure in the worst possible way. Kings and fours staring at this board where it's definitely not impossible to find some stuff that beats you. Earlier I was saying, you know, this looks this looks fairly mm -hmm. decent. One point. When you're looking down at a one pair hand, that the pair being, you know, the kings in his hand. But that's not because I was thinking of an all-in confrontation. I was more so thinking maybe a small bet. Maybe we just go to showdown. Parson was thinking otherwise. Now, given the way this hand played out, Donnie, Parson raised to 150, Guerra called, then Parson bet 160, 380, and then shoved on the river. That line makes me feel like it's very polarizing. 
Yeah, that's the, the feeling I have as well. Like, this is kind of weighted towards nuts or nothing <laughs> versus, like, some sort of more marginal hand. Like, is Parson doing this with two jacks in his hand? I, I mean, I don't think so. And Guerra does yeah, ultimately give it up. I mean, that is the power that. of the big stack in applying mm -hmm. pressure Three. to your opponents. Three. I definitely folded a four. Parson chips up to over seven million. Speaking of chipping up, Jimmy Bluffett in the chat donating yeah, off, off 20, the top rope, Jimmy. Twenty Pokego YouTube memberships donated by Jimmy Bluffett. Welcome to all of you in the chat right now. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna name everyone. Why not? We got Austin R, Bernard Reyes, James N Nadolski, Diddy, PJ420. Will H, Ryan Lim, Young Zido, Les Marston, Shane Davis, James Shaw, Andrew Henderson, Ken Fresno, Flutes Rippin, Marcus George, Tonio Tonios, Mike Kreins, Wodes, and Jasper van Hof. There we go. All part of our new YouTube membership community. There's some exclusive content you can check out on our YouTube page. We have some members only stuff on there as well. Just to uh, clarify, this is not the same as a Poker Go membership. This is just part of our YouTube community, so I just wanted to clarify that. It's so a fun little community that we're building. Uh, we've got plenty of exciting content coming up as well for our YouTube members. And as always, just keep an eye on PokerGo.com slash schedule for everything else that we have going on in the upcoming months. As Kaiser here flops the world, Donnie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that tower. Absurd. Action goes check, check. Eight of spades hits on the turn. I feel like somehow Parson is going to win this hand. I, I don't know how. I have not seen the future. I, I just feel like it's his day. Somehow he's going to find it on the river to get to get there. Guys are coming with 125. not going to win if he folds, so Geyser takes this one. Yeah, Jimmy Bluff had dropped all the the different emojis that you guys, if you are now a YouTube community member, you have access to, so fire those in at will. Go nuts. Make it rain. Yeah, that, those emojis really showing off Donnie Peters' graphic design talents. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm about as good at graphic design as you are at math. <laughs> <laughs> Very poor. Very poor. To go back to Aguero for here for a second, his results have been so impressive, most notably, of course, in Pot Limit Omaha. Three wins on the PokerGo Tour, winning the PCPLO Series 25K Championship, as well as winning the 10K PLO Bounty. His total earnings now 1.7 million, the majority of which he won right here in this building. Four diamonds Three for Parson. He raised and gave it up when Kempton came over the top. Or I guess, no, excuse me, he limped in and Kempton raised to 180 and Parson and we'll let it go. Like every time Parson has the action on him, he's just deciding how much to raise to. 150,000. And this time it is 150. Parson, 4 million in total career earnings from Helsinki, Finland. Check. 
40,000. Parson and Stain on the gas here. Those graphics on your screen are, are incorrect right now. It's Parson and that bet the 140 after Guerra checks. Excuse us for that. Guerra going to make the call. There it is, Parson. Palms away. Yeah, Parson. <laughs> Two streets of aggression, and he just uh, keeps <clears throat> everyone else down at this table. What a show, Donnie. When you're watching this, you just you ask yourself, how does this guy not win every tournament? <laughs> well, you got to get to this point. <laughs> right. <laughs> Ronald Kaiser's chips are closer to Parson than they are to himself. Has built up a quite, quite a little buffer there between him and his opponent. By the way, if you're in the chat, please let us know where you're watching from. I'm curious if we have any Finnish, Dutch, or Spanish fans in the chat of the different nationalities represented at this final table. Ter terminally drunk says, poker is luck. Yeah, with a bit of skill. So... You're not a, you're not hundred percent wrong. The Parson and Train just keeps on rolling. He's already won twelve of the first twenty one hands at this final table. This time Kaiser is gonna come along and make the call to see a flop. Queen Jack 5 here could get a little interesting. Kaiser flops a pair of jacks. He's got backdoor nut diamonds. He's got a straight draw. Parson is open ended here with backdoor hearts. Check. Action gets checked. Queen of Diamonds on the turn. Could we see another Royal Flush for your boy from the Netherlands? I mean, it's only right <laughs> that we get to see a Royal Flush on the live stream. That's what we're all waiting for. In case you missed it earlier, Kaiser made a Royal Flush yesterday during play on day one versus Bradley Rubin, who had flopped quads. So if that had been on the live stream, Donnie, we'd be looking at a million views right now. Parson bets 100k. Kaiser, who's a big favorite to win this one, just tosses in the yellow chip to make the call. Let's see if the King of Diamonds is out there. It is the four of spades. Kaiser does get the check mark. Parson, not known to give up or back down. Will we see a bluff from him? Wow, decides to give up for the first time at this final table. <laughs> he doesn't just go for the mega barrel. Kaiser now a little closer to Kempton for that second place spot. Aguera, meanwhile, down to 11 big blinds. There's only one one hand at this final table. We got Richard in the chat. He says he's Dutch, but he lives in Costa Rica. That sounds like a great way to live life. I've been able to visit Costa Rica once, and I absolutely loved it. I rented a 
four-wheel drive like a Jeep off-road vehicle, thinking like, oh, yeah, we're just going to just rip around on these off-roads. It was way scarier than I thought. <laughs> it was way scarier than I thought. It was fun, though. I just want to hit on Kaiser quickly. So he had that Royal Flush versus Flopped Quads of Brad Rubin. Then he gets crippled down to, like, 20,000 in chips. Okay. When I think that was one big blind. Gets his money in. Makes a straight flush <laughs> to sex tuple up. Oh, my God. What do you think about that? And that's how th that started the comeback. Case, that's turn. So in the money, he had 20K when the increase? big blind was 15K. That's I don't think so. And now he is here in the final point. four of the event. 50, 50 and 80. Wild run. Yeah. can hope for 80, but it seemed a bit lower than uh, just based on the 5K. Yeah, that one was quite a bit lower. It's, it's quite a weird uh, I mean, this last time the 5K got like 200. Three. Yeah. How you doing? I know you're looking at your cards because you limped last time. You can't fool me. I know you got some <laughs> limp folds. Oh, thank God. Maybe there's just more poker in uh, October than in March. Yeah. It is March Madness, though. There's a lot of people in Vegas in general. Yeah, that's what I was saying. After this was limped pre from Parson and all the small blind, Kempton checked the big blind. 7-4, deuce two diamonds. Parson comes out betting 120. Kempton gives it up. Maybe a bunch of people were still at Triton or something. Yeah, yeah, some, some people don't want to fly right after Triton. Like, there's definitely a couple of Triton people who would have max fired. Yeah. So, out of these events. Maybe 5Ks are too small for them. Not too. Maybe 10Ks will be better in that sense. I mean, not too many from Triton. Yeah. Probably. Chidwick, Rast. I mean, there's a couple guys who would. And they would always fire every bullet, which makes a difference. Are you going to try it then? Most likely. Want to make one? Yeah. Did you see the schedule? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> it's it's four, pretty four expen expensive row. there. Yeah, four in a row. Four 25, row 30, 50, and 100. 100 yeah. It's going to be the biggest 100k below ever. Yeah. I mean, it's only I mean, the it's, second it's one it's ever. The second so. one, yeah. <laughs> Do you have any plans to organize a new super high roller ball PLO? Late Be great, and they might. <laughs> Donnie, what kind of imagine a 250k PLO? I could really change have? my life. <laughs> <laughs> Elis Parson bringing up the super high rollable PLO. Of course, we had that 100k buy in last fall. Shout out Jared Blesnick, shout out Sports Cards. That was a terrific event. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's your what's your insight on uh, on 2024? Are we going to see that again? Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. I, I thought it performed well. I thought the players really liked it. Um, I think, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna strike now in PLO, this is when you do it. You know, it kind of also leads me to my 
a little bit of surprise, if I'm being honest, that the WSOP doesn't have 100k PLO just because it feels we're, like we're the safe. time is uh, right WSOP to really, after really have it, just with how big the mm. game is growing. If yeah, you just look at the uh, only the PLO, for the 25ks like, and the uh, 50ks of the PLO, they were massive. Uh, yeah. We talked about it yesterday. Triton is now, you know, they're starting to work in much more PLO into nice their schedules, nice which before were very largely no limit hold'em in short deck. Uh, now they're no limit hold'em PLO in short deck, bad, right? So. Uh, summer, summer you go back. Summer you go back. So yeah, I think it'll be back though. Super uh, high rollable peel will probably target the second half of the year. I think we'll get you know similar feel. Maybe it even grows a little bit more, which would be great. You spend the whole summer here in the states, or? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think we just go to. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, Have a nice day. Do you live in LA, right? Yeah. How is it there? Good. Uh, Pretty okay. Weather nice, food nice. Poker wise? Traffic bad. <laughs> <laughs> How about poker wise? Any good? Uh, I, I don't play any any poker there. Oh, nice. nothing. But they have pretty decent uh, PLO games at the Hustler now. Oh, yeah. So. Is, 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 but it's is Hustler it like the main casino there, or is it commerce? Uh, I would say Hustler now. Oh, yeah. yeah. They have a. Usually have one PLO game at a commerce, like a 10 20, and then a round round of bump pots and normal. Casual and laid like back uh, that were forehanded. So. These players, of course, it's like well acquainted. Need some help with that. Thanks. PLO circles aren't all that big. This could get hairy. This could get scary. Gemson already forewarning his opponent as neither player flops a flush. Bets 165. Kempton comes along with his pair of aces. Turn is the nine of hearts. Could be looking okay. at some added aggression here again from Parson. And does have the queen of hearts. Now, if you if you have the king of hearts, that's the ultimate blocker on a board like this. But the queen in forehanded play might very well be strong enough for Parson to continue firing at this, knowing how much leverage he has versus the shorter stack of Kempton, who, in the grand scheme of things, still has quite a large stack compared to the other two players. Dare I say, ICM. 550. And like clockwork, Parson continues firing. Donnie, is this a case where Kempton decides now what he has to do on the river, unless the board changes dramatically with something like a board pair? Yeah, I think it's definitely in the consideration, you know, just just knowing your opponent as well. Parson, you know, he's certainly has not held back firing bullets. Now, you may not always know if those bullets are for value or for bluffs, but, yeah, you're sitting there with one pair. I mean, it's going to be a tough spot that you're probably going to be put in on the river at least a fair percentage of the time. So maybe you have the best hand, yes, but it's marginal, right? So just get out of the way, save those chips for later on. You know, again, don't really want to jeopardize your position too much, given where Guerra is in the chip counts. Yes, Parson is well out in front, but 
you know, Kempton is, is in second place. Not ahead of Kaiser by a lot, but enough where, you know, he could probably ladder up pretty comfortably at least one more spot and then go from there once they get to three-handed. Certainly does not want to make a big mistake that forces him out, out the door before Guerra. Do you think that Parson is happy to keep it four-handed as long as possible because he just gives himself a chance to grind down his opponents? I mean, I don't think he hates it. You know, I think he's just going to continue to apply the pressure. And if ultimately, you know, chips get in the middle, he's certainly going to take his shots trying to take someone out. I think he's also probably very well aware that, you know, his opponents are, are sure. if they're going to be playing back at him, they're probably going to be very strong. Right. Here we see he does have two aces. And look at that. There's an ace on the flop. Ace, eight, four. Guerra flopping the flush. I mean, th this one is probably going in here. Wow. Parson with top set is going to feel great about this, too. Guerra only has 450K left. Looks like it's a one mover type situation. It's hard to look weak here, Donnie. <laughs> it does just make the call. I mean, Parson has plenty of outs here. Seven of spades hits on the turn. Now, Guerra, who already has a flush, now also has a set. This is one of the worst possible cards for Parsonen because it removes a potential option to hit a full house in a different kind of way. Let's say the turn would have been a deuce, then Parsonen has additional outs to make a full house. Now in this case, the seven of course gives square quads, so it doesn't really do anything for him. Check. Check. Action goes check, check, jack on the river, completes the board. Donnie, do you think Parsonen smells something in the air here? I mean, I would, I would guess so, given that, that check back. And Guerra again with a check. Wow! Look at this. Parsonen saves himself from doubling up what? one of his opponents, and Guerra could have gotten a full and double up if he had straight. shoved the flop. Hindsight being 20 20, Donnie, but I don't think Parsonen would have gone anywhere <laughs> if the flop gets check raised. <laughs> Bit mind blown there, to be honest. I mean, wow. Well done by Parsonen. I mean, don't think anyone would have faulted him for, for getting the money in on the flop and just, you know, running it out with top set there, trying to hit a full house, no big deal. But after getting checked to, turn and river just checks it back. Well done, sir. Wow, Guerrero is still only sitting on 12 big blinds. He must really be scratching his head thinking he could have had double that. One eighty. One eighty. Put. One eighty. Put. Hot raise there from Parson, just making sure the dealer understood his action. Ace Jack Six ten hundred. nine. Yeah. Quero be going for it. Put. Four behind. About one million for Guerra to start this hand. Did make it 620 on the pot size three bet. Now Parson is going to decide if he just wants to put the money in, play for it all, and run the five cards, or 
save it for a different spot. Cool. He's gonna call, so here we go. Six. Three hundred ninety k behind for Guerra. That's One point four out there. That's not a lot. All right, here's the flop. Eight nine mm -hmm. deuce. Guerra moves all in almost Tell me automatically. Did Parson has snapped okay, this off? Okay. Yeah. All right, Parson has snapped it off. Just want to make sure here he has the overpair. 50-50 displayed by our odds calculator. He's got the queens. Jack. Jack is gives him a queen high straight as well. Deuce. Eight. Deuce. Jack of hearts. Seven doesn't help. Yeah, Parson seven, seven, seven would give where a higher straight. Yeah. I love how even the best in the world are slowly naming off the potential outs, king. and a king on the turn is safe for king. Parson and yep. Guerra still with 13 you outs. Oh, I just hope it's that. I don't know what it actually <laughs> is. I'm just, I'm sorry, nothing personal. I, that ladder is. <laughs> Guerra almost out the door. River card is the eight of hearts, and that will do it for the Spaniard. Lotaro Guerra. Former winner of the PGDPLO series, one of the crushers here inside the studio, gets shown the exit by Elis Parsonen, who really is the executioner at this table, single handedly reducing this field We're one laddering. player Boys. at a time. We're laddering. We're, uh, We're making money. I made money without doing it. 350. We're so good. I just let the executioner do his job. <laughs> <laughs> You have more bounties than me now, probably. Oh no, never mind. This man's gonna need a color up pretty soon. It's chips everywhere. We are playing 40,000, 80,000 on the blinds. First strip. Kempton second in ships, 2.4 million, which is 29 bigs. Kaiser, the short stack with 22 bigs. Parson and Pop. closing in on 70% of all the chips. What an absolute show of dominance so far. <laughs> Man, I don't play anything but big hands. You ever see me play a bad hand? Could have another big one here. Parson and limped in, put the extra 40,000 in. Kempton potted it. Parson and made the call. I mean, Parson and needs like three hands to stack all his chips. <laughs> Ace, three, four, two clubs on board, waiting for the graphics to get caught up here as Parson and, I mean, this might be one of the biggest stacks we've ever seen at a final table. Just a physical amount of chips. Uh, Kempton here flopping the nut flush draw. Parson and just with the jack high flush draw. Oh, here it is. Turn card. The queen of clubs giving both players a flush. Kind of cruel, Donnie, how Parson and... Is the flop correct? I think there should be a more in there. Not eight in there. Misses the winner oh, here by just one up pip. Any, probably. Oh, sir. Thank How much? 80? Yeah. Thank you, Ronald. Man, you're welcome. I got a great hand over here, so thank God you made the pot bigger for me. <laughs> pot. <laughs> you're a real superhero, man. You're you're saving my tournament out here. <laughs> Is he allowed to bet that big? Oh wow! Look at this. Ho look, okay, Hollywood Kempton here, really trying to <laughs> sell it. Six eighty. Yeah. I hope he just goes. Okay, I guess I'm all in. That's like the classic line that you have to say right here in this spot. I call. I got no choice but to call that bet. <laughs> <laughs> I just, you gotta love this. Personal. Guy. My backer would yell. Drawing for a full house. No? 
<laughs> Come on, man, you're too good. How do you know? No, I got the nuts. What do you know? River Car brings out another club. Doesn't affect the hand at all. Let's see if Parson is going to put Kevin to the test here. Wow. All in well, and I a guess call. I guess I don't technically have the nuts. Hollywood Kempton have to show my sold it. And the Oscar goes to oh, well. oh, flush. Jeez, the man that's a cooler right there. You got the second who nuts. receives the double up. <laughs> that's true. Uh, Massive double up for wow. Kempton. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's so many chips, it's unbelievable. I was waiting for you, Isaac. Thank you. Thank you. Three. One, four. I need to fly back. It's 1.4. I can give him the blue. Yep. Pleasure doing business with you. Kempton receiving only big chips from Parson, who maintains his enormous castle. A lot of turn. Wow, the Queen of Clubs. <laughs> Not another club, the Queen of Clubs. Kaiser sitting on just 21 bigs. He might now become a spectator in some sort of preemptive heads-up battle between the two big stacks. Tony, he's got his chip stacked 80 high right now. <laughs> go higher, man. I will. Is Let's this, go. Is this legally allowed? Yeah, sure. Why not? Thank you all so much for Thank tuning you. in, by the way. If you enjoy the content that we are streaming for you, please make sure to hit that like button and to subscribe to our channel. We have nine straight days of PLO final tables, uh, and then we have one week off, four, and then we're going to do U.S. Poker five, Open for, like I want to say, ten days in a row seven, as well. Maybe. Don't miss out on all that great action. How much do you have? One, two, three, four. Like six, I guess. You can actually count my stick. Yeah, you know, just count Ronnie's and then we'll know. 4, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I got 17. How much did you have? 4.7 or so. Okay, that's 64 and then 12 for each remaining. I got a bit more now. Yeah, you said a 6-4. Six, 6-4? Four. Six, four? If, yeah, if yeah. the numbers are like that, yeah. You can probably color up on the break. <laughs> All right, color up on break potentially for Parsonen. If you want a chance to play inside the PokerGo studio at the 2024 Poker Masters, all you have to do right now is go to pokergo.com slash winmasters for a chance to, to win a seat into the Poker Masters. It's a free social media giveaway in partnership with Octopi Poker. Go give it a look, follow the instructions, and who knows, you might be playing against Lucky Chewy. Isaac Gempton might be in the house. Always a good time during the Poker Masters, which will be happening in the fall. How much did you say you had around me? Uh, before then, 17. Okay. Call. Kaiser and Kempton going head to head here.
pot staying small. Check. Kempton wins another one. Chipping up nicely is Kempton, really closing that gap. Just want to take a quick moment to remind everyone watching at home right now that the Texas Poker Open is coming up April 24th until, until May 5th with a $2 million guaranteed main event coming at you from Champions Club Texas in Houston, the first ever PGT Texas Poker Open. Phenomenal schedule. If you go to pgt.com, you can see our announcement for the whole series. You can see the full schedule. There's satellites running. There's PLO high rollers, there's Hold'em high rollers, there's a whole bunch of action going on. And of course, cash games basically all day, every day, if you are not a tournament pro, but you just want to go down to Texas to grind some poker, you should go and check them out. Champions Club in Houston. My I favorite place to play, to right? even though I haven't been there yet, but I love <laughs> the people there. We, we've, we, we've streamed cash games from there before. Jeff and Brent will be in attendance doing the live commentary. Phenomenal people over at Champions Club. So, you know, go find them on social media. And if you have a chance to go, go down there for the Texas Poker Open, which will take place April 24th through May 5th. Champions Club, by the way, also has recurring cash game streams a couple nights a week. Find them on YouTube as well if you're a fan of live stream cash games. and happy to Check. play a few small ones here after a flurry of big pots. Doubling up Kempton has definitely changed the dynamics at this table. Parson no longer the, the sole player able to do some serious damage. this one in. We're sort of more or less waiting for Kaiser to get his money in here. Sitting on 18 big blinds. How does it feel holding the mouse on a turn and some idiot pots? Mm -hmm. Man. Is it a good feeling? feels better when some guy who's not even in the pot is like, oh, the pot should be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and then I hear the beautiful pot word. <laughs> That's a pretty good sequence of events for me, I guess. <laughs> I was scared on the river, though. I mean, you could have had four deuce of clubs. I was where I, th I thought I was about to be out. One eighty. Five 
You started with 1.4-ish. Yeah, it's How much? One? Five oh, sorry, four, yeah. 480. Yeah. 580. 580. Okay, let's see the See a flop. <laughs> Let's see what the flop is. All right, lots of money already in the middle here as Kaiser looks for a double up with Queen Jack Jack five double suited. Very well, a very good starting point for him. But the flop bringing out King eight five is not what he was going for. Parson and flops two pair. Up. And wow, ball. a single misstep from Kaiser could cost him his tournament. He announces pot. Only had 785 left. Oh, yeah. Parson flopping Fair two fight. pair. Kaiser now looking for Ten a space. jack That's a good or space. some running cards to stay alive here. Five of spades. Uh, that's a three of diamonds. And you flicked that chip in. I was so happy. <laughs> so you didn't have to think about it. He's got a snap call. The executioner. <laughs> Isaac Kempton making sure that nickname sticks. Well, if this hand holds up the way that it King. stands right now, we might really have to start calling him the Executioner. The turn brings a seven. Kaiser down to two outs. A jack and a jack only would save him in this event. Parsonen looking to go heads up with a big chip lead versus Isaac Kempton. River card right. is the six of clubs, and that will do it for the Dutchman. Ronald Kaiser eliminated in third place. Kaiser collects $59,225 to go along with the bounties he's collected over the course of this tournament. Yeah. Oh, okay. he'll, he'll get and them we'll eventually. Get he's got too many is the problem. Doesn't Parson know how to manage versus all of them. Heads up. Donnie, look at this stack. It might be the final glance we get at it because we might you be seeing the color up here. As well? before man, how rich are you, man? No, I need my We have the same Yeah, we I do. I put them in the pot. No, come on, man. No, no. <laughs> some, some little more. Half of them? You're rich. I'm poor, man. Half of them? No, come on. I need, I need these. I, you don't understand. I need these. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac Kempton, very honest in declaring that these bounties mean a lot to him. Parson was ready to play for it all. Donnie, in most tournaments, players talk about a deal. Parson wants to play for more. Yeah, I mean, can you blame him? <laughs> wow. Bounties are worth $2,500 each as play continues here right away. So we don't get the immediate color up as Parson is trying to figure out how do I stack these chips? This is the first one. Kempton starting with 40% of the chips in play, so Check. definitely. Check. This match is far from over. Given both players playing styles, Donnie, I would not be surprised to see many big pots being played. Check. Check. 80. Check. 80. Fold. Nada. Nada. <laughs> Gotta get reads on you. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> you got a wall of chips. You got a great wall. Five million. Put. Call. Parson and coming out with the pot size raises from the That's button. Right. Kempton comes along with King, Queen, Queen, Seven. You'll see players defend with a far wider range of holdings. Now that we're heads up, Paul Limit Omaha. 
heads up, really a post flop game. Mm -hmm. And look at this, Kempton flopping a boat. Check. Check. Might see some more theatrics of him claiming to have a mediocre hand. Last time he did that, it led to him doubling up. Oh. Parson and bets 180. Kempton again. Donnie faking the weakness here. Check. Seven hits on the turn. Check. Check. Actually, go check, check. River brings the king of hearts. Let's see if Kempton wants to continue setting the trap here for his finished opponent. Kempton has connected Check. with basically every single card on this board. How much in there? 19. 9.20 in the middle. Person and par oh sorry, Parson and just verifying that. Parson has basically whiffed this entire thing. Does it gonna come with a bet okay. of 325? Hot his ass. Ooh. <laughs> With emphasis. Hot his ass. It sounds like a new t-shirt. I knew he couldn't resist. Print him. Parsons chip lead shrinking. By the way, if you want to get better at heads up PLO or any other form of PLO, Check out plomastermind.com slash pokergo. Sign up right now for a free account and you start practicing right away. Yeah, last how, how long is the burn? Lines about to go up for the players after the upcoming break. Parson proposed to play for the bounties as well. And because Kempton denied so passionately, I want to say, Parson might know that he has a little bit of an edge here in the way that he can apply pressure to his opponent. Top two. It's Action. good, sir. Yeah, top two is good. Players are going on a break. We are not going on a break. Through the magic of producer Aiden, who will skip this break and go straight on to the next level. Uh, let us know in the chat who you think is going to win this. Isaac Kempton, Kempton quickly closing down the gap. I check. And there we are. Players back from break. Parsonen has been colored up. And the trophy is on the table, so it does feel a little bit more official right now with the trophy in the middle of the table. Donnie, these players not only playing for the current payouts, but also the overall leaderboard. Do we have any, any sort of early takeaways yet from these first two events? 
I mean, Alan Lee's up on top. He, he obviously won the event yesterday that we covered. He did cash in this event, too. He took 10th place. He's got 183 points, so he is the men to catch right now. Both Parsonen and Kempton came into this event with zero points. They did not cash in the opening event, so whatever they earn here will be their first time scoring points. It's 170 points, 175 points, excuse me, for the winner here today, and then they're guaranteed 113 points. So whoever wins is going to slide into second place behind Lee on that series leaderboard. Seven. Here's a look at High Stakes Poker, new season airing right now. We have a limited time sale going on until March 31st. Use promo code HSP12 half to save $30 on your first year of the annual plan. That, of course, also gets you set up with our best deal coming into the 2024 World Series of Poker. So why not right now? Why not get ahead of everyone else and start watching High Stakes Poker Season 12? It's been a great season so far already. You're going to not be disappointed. Nine. Nine hundred. Oh, so you need just one more time. Sorry, guys. It's getting this box. Sorry. You got anything good? You good? What do you think? I'm gonna call. All right, Kempton's in there. Yeah. Connected, connected cards. King at 10 3, two diamonds out here on the flop. There is 1.9 million out there. Six. That's six hundred thousand announced. Cool. Yeah. Kempton sticks around. He does have the best of it right now. Four of spades on the turn. Kempton still out in front, 20% equity for Parson in here. How much in there? 3.1. 3.1. Parson getting a getting a verified count on the pot, which is 3.1 million. See if he comes with it again. He's reaching. Two time extensions used for Parson and right now as he deliberates what to do here. Check. All right, he does check. Kempton has the best hand, but it's just a pair of tens. So Kempton 
does check back. Three on the river pairs the board, also brings in another diamond, completing a possible flush draw. Of course, we can see no diamonds here at play for these two players. Parsons got just jack high, so if he wants to win this pot that is, again, over $3 million, he's going to have to fire at this one and try and take it down, which could work given the holding that Kempton has. All right, Parson does check. I checked already. Check. Oh, you checked? Yeah, yeah already. I was going to say, I, I thought I saw him check. <laughs> check on. Captain checks back, and he's going to take this, this one. Time. Kempton now starting to stretch out a lead with that pot up over 8 million. Almost a 2 to 1 chip lead for Hollywood Kempton over there. That's his new nickname. And he, he, does, he doesn't get to choose it. It's just Hollywood Kempton. Right, we have the Executioner versus Hollywood Kempton. I mean, the, the kid's a star. I think the nickname fits Hollywood Kempton. I agree. Mike says, the guy with the best fashion got to win, Parsonen. I mean, so far, Parsonen has been dominant, and then all of a sudden, Kempton just gets that flush over flush situation in that most recent hand where he took the chip lead. Still can go anyone's, anyone's, any which way. Blinds moving up here, 50,000, 100,000. So we get a look at Parson in here staring into the lights, possibly contemplating when it started to go wrong. <laughs> see, he was very much in the driver's seat of this one, but he has run into Isaac Kempton here in heads up play, and Kempton's the one starting to look like he's going to be grabbing this event number two title. Of course, still, still a little bit of a ways to go. It's not over yet. Parson in the shorter of the two stacks, but still has more than 40 big blinds to work with at the start of this hand. Kempton made it 300K, and Parson had made the call. Apologies for the graphics issue. Working to get those back as soon as we can. Parson did check this queen high flop. 300,000 was the bet from Kempton. Parson makes the call. Queen 10 3 rainbow flop, followed by the nine of hearts on the turn. Another check from the Finn. Kempton checks back. Nine of spades pairs the board on the river. Check. So you see the hands. 
check. Kempton's got the winner. Checks back and announces that he's got ace queen and wow. scooping it in again. More chips for the kid. I mean, Kempton just let Parson do all the work leading up to heads up play. And now it's time for Kempton to turn uh, turn up the heat a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he said he was interested in those pay jumps, but I, I think that that tune has changed a little bit here recently. Kempton going for the win. Up to 9.3 million. Parson and you can, you can kind of see from Parson's demeanor that it's not going his way, right? He, right. He's kind of slouched over. He kind of looks a little bit deflated in, in a sense. You know, of course, and anything can kind of change. So we'll see how things go from here. Ace, queen, queen, six for Parson on the button. One suits who just did the ace and hearts. He makes it 300K, and Kempton's in there with the queen, eight, seven, deuce, double suited. King, six, four, two clubs. Kempton checks. Check behind from Parson and Nine of Diamonds on the turn. Parson and still best here with those two queens in his hand. Pot. 700. Wow. 700 pot size bet here from Kempton. This guy just doesn't back down. No, he's firing and that gets it done, man. Damn. He's pulling away. I mean, earlier I was saying Parson and putting on away. a clinic, but right now I'd pay for the. Isaac Kempton course. Maybe he should be on PLO Mastermind, Donnie. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, PLOMastermind.com slash poker go. Go check them out if you want to study the game for free. Get better at Pot Limit Omaha. People are throwing guesses in the chat for how old Isaac Kempton is. He is 26 years old. Born in, born in 1997, Donnie. That just sounds weird to say. <laughs> yeah. Makes me feel really old. Hometown Delaware, but now resides here in the fabulous city of Las Vegas. Kempton, of course, burst onto the scene in 2022, winning a million dollars in the Win Millions 10K event. His second biggest score, the aforementioned PGT Super High Roller Bowl PLO, fourth place for $418,000. Kempton here raising it up to 300 on the button. Parson and makes the call. King Jack four. Parson and taking the lead, pairing that Jack. He's faced with a bet of three hundred thousand from Kempton. Call from Parsonen. Four Street coming. Check. Juice of Diamonds. Check. check. Check, check here. King of Clubs on the river pairs the board. Two pair for Parsonen. Kings and Jacks with that 10 kicker. He's got the check mark, but. Of course, that only means you get the check mark if you go to a showdown. How much in there? One point three hundred. One point three. Looks like he's coming with a minimum here. Or not. <laughs> First he went forward with 50. Now he come, comes out with 200. Small bet. 200 into 1.3 million. Very crafty from Parsonen. Doesn't 
Doesn't get that extra little bit of value there, but takes the pot down nonetheless. Stops the bleeding a little bit, probably most importantly. Is still a little bit below four million in chips is Parson in, but always feels good to win one when things haven't been going your way over the course of a few hands. Here you see Isaac Kempton sitting on nine million, current chip leader here. Heads up in event number two of the PGT PLO series presented by PLO Mastermind. Raise and take it there from Kempton. As a reminder, Helios Parson and did did win this event. <laughs> in the fall of 2023 at the second edition of the PGT PLO series. He started that final table with the chip lead, steamrolled through everyone within two hours and got the job done. He came into the chip lead here today and he has made it to at least heads up play. We got a couple of aces for each player. So this could be a fun one. Wow. Went raised from Kempton on the button, three bet from Parson. Given the depth of Parson and Stack, mm. yeah, this oh. is probably just going to get all in. Here we go. Oh, wow. Aces. Me too. <laughs> all right. All right. Aces versus Aces, and Kempton has the best of it. I got the thing suit. being, though, I like Parson I has some additional straight outs if the board comes low. Man, it was nice playing with you, man. Always a pleasure. <laughs> 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 I don't know about that. He does the sweat. Something like, I feel like if Jack one. seven, three with diamonds. two diamonds, that's a good one. That's fair. Yeah. How about three deuce with spades? That's a good one too. <laughs> All right, let's see the flop. Can Kempton end it right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Queen something. six deuce comes off the off on the flop. Three of spades. No. <laughs> you can have a gutter. A gutter with a spade. Parson, the favorite here to become a clean winner of this pot. <laughs> wow. Deuce on what the is going turn. On around I'm here, so man. scared. Man, hey, it was. Man, <laughs> you, you, you got trips. You won basically already. Well, Parson needs to fade a spade yeah, right like now. No spades left in the deck. Man. There's no way I can win. I think there is. I can find a way you win. Really? Yeah, I guess. Like right there? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> this is hilarious. Oh, Kempton asking for it. <sighs> oh River is the God. eight of hearts. And Parson and finds a double up. I'm getting I'm getting a Step Brothers vibe. One point two. Two point two, three point two. It's like we're watching two people become best friends in front of our eyes. Mm, four. Oh. Oh, sorry. One, two, three, three point six seven five, right? Yep. With that pot, Parsonen back up out in front. Just under seven point five million for him. Point six. Just over five point four million for Isaac Kempton. This is Heads Up Play, event number two, the $7,600 bounty tournament here at the PGT PLO Series, presented by PLO Mastermind. We got Parsonen, the Finn, up against Kempton, the American. First place, just over $131,000.
These players are guaranteed just under $85,000. Of course, that does not include the bounties that they have won. You guys can see those red chips yeah, like five, in front five of five each point, player stacked up. Years, those yeah. are the bounty chips that they have already claimed. Each one worth $2,500. He gets about 10 or 11 for each player, so 25K or more that they've earned to this point. Of course, whoever knocks out the other person during heads up play will get that final $2,500 bounty. In addition to winning their own. You always want to win your own. That means you won the tournament. I mean, we even have a progressive bounty event, Donnie. Where Two of them. Where, where, where the heads up battle is basically for all the money. Oh, yes. Yeah, two of those coming up. We have one at the 5K price point, one at the 15K price point. Those should be a lot of fun. Of course, this entire series builds towards the $25,000 PLO Championship coming up in a few days. This coverage here is part of nine consecutive days of live streaming here from the Poker Go Studio in tournament? Las Vegas. This is the PGT PLO Series, again, presented by... Yep. Our friends at PLO Mastermind. Check them out at plolomastermind.com slash pokergo. Oh, uh, Get in there for free. No credit card required. He's he's you can start testing oh, out all the Alan. tools, Alan, play Alan, with the Alan, trainer, Alan. watch some videos, all that it's great stuff if you are Bryce. interested in That's enhancing they your Pot Lemon Omaha game. Kempton lips the button here. Parson goes to 300K. Kempton makes the call. Ace, Jack, six. Two spades out there on flop. That's 250. Parson comes with 250K. Kempton sticks around. Ace of diamonds on the turn. Both players are currently playing the same hand. Both playing the ace queen from their hand. You see Parsonen's equity a little bit higher because he can make some more full houses than Kempton can. Three fifty from Parson and Kempton makes the call. Deuce of spades on the river. This pot is one point nine million. If it goes to showdown, it will be chopped. Parson and checks. Ace. Kempton checks Ace back. Queen. They're going to show the same hand here, and Dio is going to have to do all the work because they're going to chop this one up. Poker Go Play is here with a new way to win featuring sweepstakes poker that has already awarded more than $100,000 in prizes. So don't miss out. Play now over at PokerGoPlay.com or you can download the game on Google Play or the App Store. No purchase necessary. Get in the game with Poker Go Play. Back in the studio here, Heads Up Play, event number two of the PGT PLO series, presented by PLO Mastermind. My name is Donnie Peters. In the booth here, alongside 
my colleague Remco Rinkema, who's stepped out of the room for just a minute. He'll be back shortly. If you are joining us on YouTube, please be so kind. Hit that like button for us. Also, subscribe to the channel. Tomorrow, we will be bringing you final table wow, coverage of event number three, a $5,000 buy-in PLO tournament. That event is currently running now with day one. They are up over 70 entries so far. That field will continue to grow throughout the day till registration closes. And then again, we'll be coming back tomorrow with another final table right here from the Poker Go studio on the Las Vegas Strip. They're just going to give this one up and give a walk. Not going to play that 10 4 3 deuce. You heard him there. Blinds are up 75,000 on the small blind, 150,000 for the big blind. Are you planning to play those no limit events during WSOP? Which ones? I mean, whatever. Any, any of them? I'll, I'll play some of them. Not, a, not like a lot, but. Like you do play some no limit. Yeah, I play like I'll play the 5k, 10k. If there's a good 25k, I think I, have a, I usually don't play higher than 25 for no limit. Yeah. You? Limp spot I, I know here. you played the mixed, the yeah, half I, mean, I, I play some. I really enjoy playing them though. Yeah. The problem is it feels like the pace of the place is so slow, yes. so tilting. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? I mean, Parson just he wants to gamble all the time. I mean, it's just great. And then he's also into golf, which is kind of a a funny one, which is like the slowest sport in the world. Yeah. I mean, he obviously gambles on it. I mean, oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> there's definitely no way he's getting out there on the golf course without having some money on the game. Maybe that's how he balances, you know. Pedal to the metal and the, at the poker table, whether that be live or in the virtual felt, and then kick back and relax on the golf course. Parson in here going to bluff at this one. At least bluffing because he doesn't have the best hand, but he might think he's value betting here with the eights and fives. What's your takeaway so far, Donnie, on, on this heads up play between these two? I mean, I, I, I think it's, it's kind of settling in now. Originally, you know, Kempton certainly got the best of it and started to pull away, which I think, again, going back to how Parson was kind of acting. His demeanor a little bit deflating, right? But now that he was able to get that double up when he made those trip deuces, both players having aces, but Parson was able to get there. Then you know, I, th I think he feels a bit better about himself now. So I think they're kind of settling in. I, I like what you said earlier. You made the analogy to uh, Step Brothers. You know, they're kind of yep. becoming friends right before our eyes, or at least closer friends right before our eyes, which is which is good to see. I'm not sure how friendly Parson's going to feel this one is getting getting check raised here on the end. Parson does have two pair, but it is second best to that straight for Kempton. Kempton has that 9-7 in his hand.
little, little blackout there for us for a second, but it doesn't look like we missed anything. Thought, thought that might have been a pick the cards up and throw them in, but Parson and puts them back down on the table, so. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> we just pulled. You scare me, man. It's Hollywood <laughs> Kempton over here, just the acting job on every hand, this kid. Whenever the new G GPI award nominations are announced for next year, we need an, an, an award for best Jesus actor. What a fool. I mean, what a fool. We kept it in the conversation wow. for poker You're personality of the year. Oh. I mean, Every kid's great. Day. Every day. Good fool. Good fool. Can't believe it. Ready? The base is up? Or? You did? No, I'm asking oh, you. No, guys. no, no. No? Better? Too, too, too better. Oh. Parson seems fed up, Donnie. Completely fed up. <laughs> Call. At least these guys are both willing to play, which makes this a lot of fun to watch. Ace-5-5 five five on board here. Okay. Not a flop that either player specifically likes. They're both probably thinking of ways to get creative here. Look at this, Kempton with that creativity creeps back up and we're almost tied in chips again. Let us know in the chat, who do you think is gonna win this? Chat is uh, talking about the Finnish pros in general playing a lot of golf. Can't blame them. I'm, I'm a terrible golfer, but I really like oh. golf. I feel like it's the type of sport that you can just enjoy doing every now and then. When's the last time you played golf, Donnie? Couldn't tell you. Could not tell you. Probably at least 10 years ago, 12 years ago. You know that Poker Go has the annual golf outing, right? W weren't you there last year? Nope. Why'd you miss it? I have my reasons. Keep them to myself. Wow. Golf hater. <laughs> what a golf hater. I'm not, not a golf hater. Not a golf hater. Every tenth ball I hit is good. Not bad. How much in there? Kempton is in there. Both players putting in 600K here on the turn. Parson was the one doing the betting. Jack nine deuce, two spades on the flop, followed by the five of hearts on the turn, six clubs on the river. Check, check on the river. 
Pair of 10s for Kempton, but no good against the what was Queens. King, oh, 10, 10, 10, 3, spades. <sighs> Give me a queen so I can donk pot one time. Arsenal are now getting back up towards 8 million in chips. Kempton just below 5 million. Still feels like it's pretty much anyone's game. You know, a little bit more pep in the step for Parson in there. Kempton, you know, at least it sounds from his conversation that he's still in pretty good spirits despite things taking a turn in the recent little going. Pot. Pot sized race here from Isaac on the button. Ace, queen, jack, six. Parson says, no, sir. Throws over the chips. put a poll out into the universe, Donnie, and the same way our chip counts are very close, so are the poll results. 55% so far thinks Parson and will win it. Check. Well, if Kempton is able to get the chip lead again, put the poll back Check. out there. I want, <laughs> I want to see if it flops. Oh, I want to see if people are just voting based on who's in the lead. That's what I want to see. We need to like do some testing here. Got trip sevens here for Parson, the player that 55% of the chat thinks is going to win this tournament. Kempton has has a king to connect with the king seven seven five board. Three of clubs comes in on the river, so check mark for Parson. Kempton with the check. That is four hundred thousand here from Parson. Kempton thinks better of it. His hand into the muck. A little bit of a little bit of a laugh from Kempton as Parson and stacks his chips back up over eight million. He's going with the like I, I just roll out of bed look. <laughs> I feel like you would sleep you could sleep in that fleece, right? Oh, you know? Yeah, for sure. Just rolled out of bed, threw the sunglasses on. He's walking downstairs. He's going to go out the door, go get a coffee or something. And well, our graphic designer, Jess, sent me a photo this morning of Isaac Kempton, what, what, the way he looked yesterday, and it cracked me up so much. She goes, does this guy own a brush? I mean, the, the answer is no. Look at this. Look at this photo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, come on. Oh. His hair is all over the place. Kempton limps here on the button. King Jack 6-3. Parsons going up with it. 450. 
ace, six, five, four for him. Is suited to the ace in oh. spades. Kempton is in there. A little over a million out there between these two. Queen, 10, seven, two diamonds out there. That King Jack. Look, looking kind of nice for Kempton, giving him a straight draw. Five hundred. Five hundred. Just about half pot here from Kempton. Quick, quick fold from his opponent. I feel like the chips have pretty much not moved. Okay. Ever since Parson got that double up. Yep. Like it's been, he's pretty much had right around 7.5 and Kempton's had right around 5.5. Like that's just where they're, I mean, a little bit up and down here and there, but for the most part, it's it's been pretty static. Parsons turned to limp in on the button, Kempton checks. King, Jack, nine, all black with check. two spades. Check, check, three of hearts on the turn. Parson improves here to a pair of threes, but it's gonna be Kempton, the one who's coming out with 225K. It's it done. Still heads up here, PGDPLO event number two. If you want to join sort of the path to poker mastery, you can do so right now by going to octopipoker.ai or scan the QR code on your screen. It's a fun, social, and affordable way to learn poker. It's honestly an amazing platform, partly owned and, de and developed by Nick Shulman and Mr. Lucky Chewy, so don't miss out. Check them out right now, octopipoker.ai. Donnie, you blink twice and there's a million in the middle. 325. I mean, we're at that stage of the tournament, you know? from Parson and he does flop the nut straight. He's got the diamonds as well. Very powerful holding for him. Kempton says, no, thank you, sir. Gets out of the way. Back up over eight million now for Parson. Trying to stretch back out that lead, but every time we've seen him start to do it, Kempton kind of pulls it back closer, so We'll see if things can stick for Parson and now.
Parson in here raises to 450,000. Ace, Jack, Jack, seven for him. Kempton's in there with the Ace, 10, six, three. 10, 10, four, two clubs. Kempton smashes this one with those trip tens. Check, check here on the flop. Four of hearts comes in on the turn. Kempton checking once again over to Parson. Parson was the pre-flop aggressor. Okay. Check, check here again. Despite that pre-flop pre aggression, no further action so far. Five of clubs here completes the board on the river. Kempton is still best. Kempton looking like he wants to come with some sort of bet here. There is a little over a million out there. 350,000. One third pot. Parson and flicks it in. Wow. Bad news. Big one. Important one for Kempton right here. <clears throat> Stakes are high. Every pot has big consequences. Tricky. You never you yeah. never fall for it. You never bet the turn. All I ever want to do is check rates. You're wise to me. I think I had a good hand for it, though. Kempton limping in on the button. Jack Jack 7 4 for him. 9 8 5 4 for Parson. And he checks. King 9 Check. 4 here on the flop. Parson and flopping. Bottom two pair, nines and fours. He checks. Kempton comes with half pot, 225,000. Parson makes the call. Three of hearts on the turn. Another check from Parson. In. It almost feels like we're just waiting for a cooler of sorts. These players are, you know, both very, very well versed in the game. I don't really, I, I can't really pick up on anyone having an edge here, Donnie. Yeah, I mean. Check. I would agree. You know, I, I think I've been kind of feeling that for a little while now. This one probably going to get checked down. And if it does get checked down. Parsons two pair going to take it. But, yeah, I mean, it just feels like like we saw when it ended up being Parson and doubling through Kempton. You know, I mean, they had the same hand. They both had aces with, you know, two other cards, and, and Parson ended up getting there with his other cards making trips. But... That type of situation, you know, aces versus kings, couple of big Broadway hands, something like that. Like I think that's ultimately what it's kind of coming down to here. Again, really hasn't been much movement overall since Parsonen found that double up. Start of heads up play, it was really all Isaac Kempton. He quickly took the chip lead from Parsonen. He stretched out that chip lead. Then they got the money in. Both of them had aces. But Parson ended up making trip deuces 
to find a double up there. And ever since then, the chip stacks have been pretty much right what you see on your screen. About seven and a half million for Parson, about five and a half sure. million for Kempton. Up or down, you know, a couple hundred thousand either way at times, but no real deviation from this point. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of feels like at some point the money's got to go in, right? I mean, the blinds are climbing, so it's just going to take one of those coolers and that'll be that. Quick look over at today's event number three underway right now. Registration still open. 5K PLO event, 77 entries so far. Plenty of familiar faces. David Williams in the mix, Daniel Legrano, Dan Dylan Wiseman. You can follow the live reporting on pgt.com. That final table streams tomorrow. in the middle here, King 5-3-2, clubs. Kempton with the worst of it. It's going to bet. Parson flopping two pair. Pot. King 5-50. There it is. Parson coming with the aggression. Kempton now with a decision, only with a pair of kings. Parson gets it done with the check raise and extends his chip lead yet again. Now up to almost a 2-1 to one chip lead, which has been a while since we've last seen a gap that large. Four point. I think it's like less. Million, two, three. How much? It's like 3.9. Okay, thanks. Limp spot here. Jack 10 3, two spades. Checked to the eight of hearts on the turn. That eight. Smashing Parson in with a set. Kempton checks. 275 is the bet from Parson. Kempton out of the way. Just to remind everyone, final two players guaranteed $84,000, $131,000 up top, and of course, <coughs> that additional final remaining bounty that is still in play. Winner of the event also gets to cash their own bounty chip. How many hands? One. One, One more hand before the blinds go up.
Jack Deuce. Rainbow on the final hand of this level. Kempton with the best pair on this board. You're so accurate. That's so much. What's the level there? Just a 5k. Who cares if you max weight? Blinds now 100, 200 with a 200k big blind ante. That ante doesn't count towards the size of the pot until we get to the flop. Check. Check. Kempton flopping two pair. Makes a full house on the turn, 600k in the middle. Fires away and Parson fires those cards into the muck. Jack 10, 8, 4 here for Kempton on the button, double suited. Pot. Comes in with a pot size raise. 10, 10, 9, 9 for Parsonen. Definitely going to be playing this pot. one. 1.8. Oh, pots this. It. This could be a huge one. Hollywood. You got aces Kempton again, too? <laughs> we'll see. I'm going to call that wager. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. boy. He's in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sit up straight. You better pay attention to this one. Right? We practically have a coin flip going into the flop. One Kempton could just move all in on the flop here. Only 2.8 million behind, behind with 3.8 in the middle already. Queen, 5, 7 two point on board. 2.35. Pop. All in. How much is wow. it? Wow. Parson and puts Kempton to the test. Tony, there's 3.8 in the middle. Okay. Oh my God. What do we got? I have a jack high. <laughs> a jack high? I have a gutter. Eight nine. Man, I got back doors though. I feel like I'm supposed to. There's 3.8 in the middle. So many back doors. Yeah, it does have back door hearts. His back door spades are better than Parsonen's back door spades. Also, half the deck gives him a back door straight draw. I mean, I, I don't think he knows it, but he could hit a jack. Right. <laughs> wow, 40% equity as it stands. If Pars if if Kempton could see Parsonen's cards, well, he if he if he knew that he had 39% equity, right, he right, would right. he would put his money in yep. for sure. Right. <laughs> Yeah, taking some time here. The beauty of Pot Limit Omaha, so many draws, so many options. Kempton Take weighing jack out. Jack eight four. Then <laughs> just called his, he called, called his, his exact hand. hand. <laughs> Are you kidding me, Parsonen? I've always been he bad at math. 
<laughs> Just give me one minute. One more. I mean, you have plenty he of He called it. Jack 8410. This is incredible. I've never seen this before. That, that was that was pretty tremendous. That was pretty tremendous. I mean, I, Isaac Kempton did say he had Jack high with a gutter. Parson and asked if he had 8-9. Don't think Kempton responded to that, but here it is. Wow, makes the call. I mean, not a cute. Elis Parson and oh, Jack is alive. Yeah. A favorite here. Both the to back close things out. <laughs> yeah. I got higher spades too. And yeah, Kempton feeling if good. Even though he's behind, feeling straight, good about his call now, high. knowing how things <laughs> shake out. I mean, only seven outs as it stands. But so many cards on the turn could give him additional outs. Is there any killing outs? No. Oh, Three of spades on I the block turn. You block it, though. You block it. Exactly what, what Kempton six or Jack see. six spade. Can you squeeze sque squeeze the river? No. <laughs> we fun. No squeezing in at tournament final tables. Man, Kempton. I got a good feeling. I got, I got a weird feeling about this one. Six or Jack? I think it might be the Jack. Jeez. The Jack that I didn't think would be live. Only something. River card. It is not there for Isaac you, Kempton. You, and Elis Parsonen goes wire to wire. Started as the chip leader, wins this event for the second straight year as he once again shows the world that he is one of the premier PLO players. Thank you. Thanks for dealing. Isaac Kempton, by the way, once again an impressive showing here at the PokerGo studio. Takes home $84,975. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Kempton, Two back doors, excuse me, Parson, the winner, me, you, takes you, home $131,000. Yeah, that's the work hard to my pair. Ace King, poor five. And yeah, that's like the that. thing. You can, yeah. My pairs can always. You could be there like at 42%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, wow. and you are locked for like 27%. Or yeah. Oh, yeah, you get my bounty. Elis Parson and taking it down, grabbing think. all the bounties as we take a quick look inside the studio and look here, the upcoming schedule of events tomorrow. 3K, or excuse me, event three, 5K PLO final table starting at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific time. And then the stakes will arise. 10K PLO final table on a Sunday. Lots more Pot Limit Omaha action still to come here from the PokeGo studio in Las Vegas. My name is Rem Korinkama. Donnie Peters alongside me. We'll be back tomorrow for more PLO action from Las Vegas. For now, thank you all so much for watching. It's been an honor and a pleasure on your way out the door. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We'll be back with a lot more PLO action tomorrow. Thank you for watching.